If I said the large Ferris wheel in London, you would immediately think of this one. Rewind over 100 years earlier, and London already had one. And it was known as the Earl's Court Great Wheel. So it was located here at Earl's Court, just over my shoulder behind there. The Great Wheel, Big Wheel, or Gigantic Wheel, as it was also known, opened in 1895 as part of the Empire of India exhibition at Earl's Court. The exhibition was built on what was essentially a piece of railway wasteland, landlocked between all the various branches of railways known at the time as Earl's Court Junction. It was well positioned between the local railway stations of Earl's Court, West Kensington and West Brompton stations. Construction began in 1894 and it was based on an earlier design of the original Ferris wheel which opened in 1893 at the World's Columbian Exhibition in Chicago. With the name Ferris wheel coming from its designer, George Washington Gale Ferris Jr. However, the Earl's Court wheel was a copy of that design and not officially a Ferris wheel, although we tend to call them all this today. The European rights to the Ferris wheel patent were acquired by an engineering company owned by Walter Bassett and based in Greenwich, where the Earl's Court Great Wheel was manufactured. Made of steel and standing at 308 feet tall, some 44 feet higher than the Ferris wheel, and only 135 feet shorter than the much more modern and marvelled London Eye. It weighed over 1,100 tonnes, and had a theoretical capacity of over 1,600 people at a time in its 40 cars. That's a lot of people at one time on a Ferris wheel, especially by Victorian standards. It was also powered by two steam engines, and a complete revolution took around 20 minutes. It carried over 2.5 million passengers in its short existence, closing in 1906, just 11 years after it was built. This was mainly due to its dwindling ridership in its later years. So as we can see, it proved very popular at the time, and some say you could see as far as Windsor Castle from the top. It also outlasted the festival that it was built for, with the Empire of India exhibition closing some years earlier. It was supposed to go out with one final bang in 1907. They were originally planning on blowing up the wheel with explosives. However, this idea didn't go down too well with the District Railway Company, whose railway was directly at the side of the wheel, but they weren't complaining when it brought millions of passengers by rail to the site during its operation. We can see from this old map of the exhibition where the wheel was located. The exhibition also contained many other attractions, such as the Switchback Railway, gardens, theatres, colonnades, and even a palace. Now this sounds like somewhere else I've covered before. Check out my Crystal Palace series for more information. Once the exhibition and the wheel had been demolished, most of the land reverted back to being railway sidings and industrial usage. There is nothing remaining from the Great Wheel today, and the view of the land it once stood on is now obscured by the Transport for London Ashfield House offices. Other similar versions of the Ferris Wheel appeared around the world. In 1896, the 220-foot-high Blackpool Great Wheel opened at the Winter Gardens. We will be covering this in more detail on the channel very soon. In 1900, the 315-foot-high Gigantic Wheel opened in Paris. This was the largest wheel in the world at the time. All of the original Ferris wheels were demolished, apart from one that still exists, and that is the Prater Ferris Wheel in Vienna. It opened in 1897 at 212 feet tall and still operates to this day. Now let's head over to the other side of this large exhibition site and take a look at what became of it in later years. Situated just behind me over here would have been the original Earl's Court exhibition stretching for about half a mile away from me here. And then later it became the famous Earl's Court Exhibition Center which opened in the 1930s and closed in 2014. Now that's the one that most of us will be familiar with today. But now it's to become another posh housing development that London certainly doesn't need.
So whilst the London Eye is a great icon today, it certainly wasn't the first, and it certainly won't be the last. Check out my other videos of London here, and I'll see you on the next adventure.